Hey folks, Brian Keene here. Before we start the show, I want to take a moment to address you personally. Now, I know we have all kind of folks who listen to this podcast every week, uh, both fans and professionals in the industry. And some of you want to be writers, but you just you don't know where to start. Um, you're working, you, you go to the job all day, and then you get home, and, and you don't have the time or the money to go to college, right? Wrong. Let me tell you about the National University Online's MFA program. Since 2005, it has helped people exactly like you, working adults, learn the craft of creative writing. What's better? They don't turn their nose up at horror. They're genre fiction friendly. Horror, science fiction, fantasy, young adult, you name it, they'll teach you. You can work with faculty like Lee Thomas and John Coyne. If you listen to the show, you should know who they are. Uh, but yeah, horror sci-fi faculty, they focus in fiction, creative nonfiction, poetry, or screenwriting. Uh, the screenwriting faculty are all active Hollywood professionals. I mean, this is an alumni network of over a thousand graduates. And as I said, National University MFA program is fully online. It's a creative writing program with no residency requirement. They are an accredited, not-for-profit university. Find out all the details at nu.edu. That's www.nu.edu, the National University MFA Creative Writing Program. No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over. No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back once again to The Horror Show with Brian Keene, brought to you by the Project Entertainment Network and available for free on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, YouTube, and all other platforms. I am, of course, your host, Brian Keene. Have a full studio today. We're missing exactly one co-host, and that is Mike Lombardo. So that means Dave is here. Hello. And Matt is here. Yo. And Mary is here. Hi there. But also joining us, first of all, to my left, the lovely Phoebe making her return to the show. Hello. I'm so happy I could actually be here for a change. We're happy you could be here yeah, for a I'm change. I'm excited. You, you've had a tough year, but you are yeah. smiling yeah. And, and happy. And it's, it's good to have you here. Thank you. And uh, sitting to my immediate right, the man himself, no stranger to listeners of the show, about to leave behind childhood and go to middle school in another week. Mr. Dungeon Master 77.1. Hey, everybody. How's it going? That's all you had to say? Um, also, I'm going to be graduating fifth grade in a month, in a week. In one week. One week. We should have a, a party for you. What do you think? Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right. Coming up later in the show, when he gets here, because he's not here yet, Christian Jensen, also no stranger to longtime listeners of the show, one of our most popular guests, uh, if you've never heard him on the show, hopefully he will bring his A-game, Christian Jensen, and you will find out why, in fact, he's one of our most popular guests. Uh, but before we get to all that and the news, I want to tell you about Keyport Cthulhu 2. It's a sequel to by Armand Rosamilia and Chuck Buddha, our dear friends, for the survivors of the horrific night when the esoteric Order of Dagon attempted to unleash their dark god from the bay. The nightmare seems to be only beginning. What new cosmic horror does Keyport have for those who look too closely under the veil of this small fishing village, seeing what cannot 
the unseen. Another journey into madness awaits readers in this thrilling sequel that is Keyport Cthulhu 2 by Armand Rosamilia and Chuck Buda. It also includes bonus short stories, including one that Armand co-wrote with his daughter, which I think is very cool. That's kind of like what you and I did, Dungeon Master. Yeah, it is. Yeah, with uh, Schools Out. Mm. Should people buy that? Yes. Yeah. That goes towards your 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 second Xbox One fund? Uh, I thought you came up with that idea. Well, I, I came up with that idea to get you to read books this summer. I told Dungeon Master we, we could get a second Xbox One in the house. We mm-hmm. put it in his bedroom. That way he and I can play Fallout 76 at the same time. Would you play but, against each other? No, we'd team up. Oh, okay, that's we'd, cool. We'd play against Mahita Bell Wilson and Matt Hayward and oh, Asher fun. Ellis and all the other writers. Um, but he has to read X amount of books with each book a, a dollar denomination towards the Xbox One. Dad, you already know I like to read, so that won't be a problem. All right. All right, we shall see. That's awesome. We shall see. I suspect you're going to get distracted by building clubhouses out in the woods and going swimming. and and. That may very well be. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get old enough, you can also read Keyport Cthulhu 2 by Armand Rosamilia and Chuck Buddha that is available right now on Amazon and is part of Kindle Unlimited as well. So, like I said, uh, we've got Christian coming up in the second half of the show little bit of housekeeping and then some sad news um housekeeping wise i want to remind people the third annual horror show with brian Keane charity telethon will take place friday september 27th through saturday september 28th at dark delicacies in burbank california at their brand new location it's going to be a live in-store event yes uh the store will be open those full 24 hours this year our first year, we raised $10,000 in 24 hours for charity. Our second year, we raised $20,000 in 24 hours for charity. This year, we're going for 30000 and we're also doing two charities instead of one. So, a lot of pressure. Dave, I know you've told me off the air you're feeling the pressure on this one. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's $30,000. It's, like, you know, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, yeah. I, I feel confident we can do it. If I didn't think we can do it, I would have never upped the amount that much. So I'm I'm confident we can do it. Mary, what do you think? Can we do it? I think we can do it. I think we could do it. I sense a butt there. I worry about the toll on you, but I think it's I think it could be done. Not on you, Dave. Just on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Phoebe worries about Dave. Yes. I worry about you. We can only take so yeah. so yeah, many we each have a role so here. many projects on here. You know. Um, maybe if Christian Jensen helps with the charity, maybe we can give a couple extra thousand dollars from the um, curse jar. <laughs> ah, you bring up a good point, young man. Um, if you did not yeah. listen to last year's telethon, Dungeon Master came through. Now, he had taken a giant pickle jar. Matt, Phoebe, you know that you go to the grocery store, not the little regular size pickle jars, the big giant ones. Mm-hmm. He, he had one of those. And he decorated it. It was a swear jar. And every time somebody on the telethon swore, they're supposed to put money in the jar. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar what? with it because when you had Grindcast on here, I slapped that, uh, 10 bucks in there just to right. ahead of myself. <laughs> Dave, what, what did we end up? We ended up with like $285 Something in the swear yeah, jar, it was, right? And it yeah, put it, us over the 20000 mark. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So good Who on you, buddy. And that's so you think, you think we should invite. What, Christian Jensen and, and Kelly Owen to the telethon? <laughs> yeah, they bring in a... I'd say they complete the gold just on curse jar money. <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Kelly paid you on the side to, to suggest this, didn't she? Tell the truth. No, no. 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 Kelly, Kelly didn't put you up to this? No. no? Okay. All right, well, there we go. Maybe we will have Christian Jensen and Kelly Owen. I'll tell you who we will have. Uh, we'll have John Skip. I can announce that. I've already talked to him. And we're going to have a whole bunch of other people that I can't announce yet. But uh, That's exciting. But it's, it's exciting. It's very it is exciting. Very well, exciting. It's, in, it's in L.A. It's so the it's heart new faces. of Hollywood. Yeah. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be 99.9% new faces, which is, is why we're moving it out there. And that's no offense against the people who no, have appeared on the previous No telethons. offense against the other faces. Uh, some of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, you, you, we like your faces you too. can't <laughs> have the same people every year. Or people are not going to tune in, and they're not going to donate money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, yeah. September 27th, 
and September 28th, Dark Delicacies, Burbank, California. All right. We have two news stories. Both of them suck. Aww. So before that, does anybody have anything good that they want to cover or get into? Um, I do want to recommend a documentary that Phoebe and I watched uh, about a week ago, actually, now. It's called oh. Bathtubs Over Broadway. Okay. It's on Netflix. Uh, the basic premise of the, the documentary is a guy who was a writer on, on the David Letterman show. And if you ever watched the David Letterman show, they used to do this bit called Dave's Record Collection, where they would get really weird records, and then he'd play a piece of it, and then Letterman would make fun of it. So he's searching for records in New York City, you know, where the show is. And he keeps finding these weird albums where they're like Broadway shows, but they're Broadway shows about corporate products, like Sitgo or, or Coca-Cola or, or Ford. And he's like, what are these? And he starts investigating. It's a thing called industrial musicals that he used to do from the, like the 50s to like the 80s, where companies would literally spend millions of dollars putting together a Broadway show for their sales teams that would be performed once yeah. for wow. their sales team. It's really, wow. it's and really interesting. So he gets into oh. this, and he starts tracking down people who, who performed in these or who wrote the music. And it's not just like schlubs. It's like people who wrote actual Broadway musicals and it's actual people who are stars, like people that you know, that did these on the side. And at one point, they give an example. A Broadway show back then cost about half a million dollars to put on. Ford spent $4 million doing one of these. He performed it once. Wow. So he goes into it and he finds people doing shows. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. And you think to yourself, you're like, this sounds like a, a terrible idea. No, I'm, trust me. This is one of the best documentaries we watched in a year. We were both mesmerized it, it's by really this. It's really interesting. It's really entertaining. It's very funny. It's, it's, first of all, because the news is super depressing, no matter who you are. The news is terrible. This is like a happy thing. It was like an hour and a half of like non-depressing stuff, <laughs> so it was delightful there. So again, it's Bathtubs Over Broadway, and it's on Netflix, and I highly recommend it. you watch this, because you will learn about a, a, a facet of the entertainment industry that you probably had no idea ever existed. Huh. And throughout the show, there's, there's music clips, and sometimes they film these so you can actually see footage of these musicals being performed. So it's 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 actually it's very entertaining. Well, there there you go, yeah. Matt. If yeah. uh, if royalties on on Edge of Twilight plateau, you can you can write corporate musicals. <laughs> Prilosec, the musical, brought to you by Matt Wilson. <laughs> Ambien, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dungeon Master. Um, I do want to point out a book I had to do a book report on. Yes, here, take the microphone. Tell us your book report. All right. So basically, we. At my school, we had to do a book report where we told the report as the main character. Oh, very cool. And very it was cool. a lot of fun. Um, my character, of course, was um, from a book. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. For those of you who play the Fallout games and like them, I would recommend this book, which is called After the Bomb by what? Gloria D. McLowitz. And it is a kid's book, parents. <laughs> Oh, it's a kid's post-apocalyptic <laughs> book. Yes. It, it's got um, it's got a high schooler holding a gun at some salvagers. It's got um, a little girl getting torn apart by a coyote. Still a children's book, though. Yeah, it's still, still a children's <laughs> book. Um, it has some got just... Um, it has, it has a dog's head in one part. Well, like, that answers my next you question. Still, you, still <laughs> <children's> <laughs> you see, this is like some dogs. watership down level. This is not right Phoebe here. approved. Phoebe will not be reading this book. I, I, I want to I clarify for the nutcases out there on Twitter. Not only did I approve this book, his fifth grade teacher also approved the book. Okay, so. Yeah, so there you yeah. go. Suck on that. Suck it. Hey, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Dungeon Master. Yeah, but it's also got, like, um, it also teaches you, the reason why it's appropriate is because it teaches you preemptive survival skills, like how to survive in the radiation, what to do if a bomb ever fell, um, how to, like, actually put IV bag in someone. Good and, point. And, like, different strategies you can use to get water to a place from a long distance. It's a really good book. I recommend it as a very compelling storyline. And just um, remember, Gloria, um, the author, author of this book, I'm sorry if, you're, um, if I pronounced your name wrong, but again, it's um, After the Bomb by Gloria D. Mil McLowitz. 
It's very Sound. nice uh, yeah. reporting now, of this. Now it's I'm going to give the mic back to my dad. Good job, Dr. Master. Thank you well for done. that book report. Yes, absolutely. And you know what you did? You are a, a master like your father. You gave the perfect segue because you were just talking about him right before he got here. Dungeon Master had a plan <laughs> to hit the 30,000 goal oh uh, on this year's charity <laughs> telethon. He said, well, just make sure you have Mr. Christian Jensen on the air and you'll hit it. Um, and Dungeon Master is already going for his prop. But before you do that, let me tell folks who just returning to the show <laughs> for his fifth or sixth appearance, one of our most popular guests of all time. Of course, uh, Christian Jensen, he's a horror thriller and erotica writer lives in central New Jersey. His books include Lone Survivor, Witch's Woo! House, Paranormal Reality, uh, Witch's House, Chronicles of Rosario, books one through four, Demonic Possession, The End, which is one of my favorites, and many more. Um, I think on his previous, or the one before his previous appearance, we talked about how his books have been banned by Amazon for being too graphic and naughty, uh, but you can oh, still wow. find them on Smashwords or at Barnes & Noble. Um, now, as we reported on the show last week, he's turned his artistic energies towards acting, appearing most recently in Return of the Slasher Nurse and the upcoming Bloody Summer Camp. Welcome back, Christian Jensen. Oh, I thank you, thank you, thank you. If I keep doing more stuff, you're, it's going to take a whole show for you just to introduce me. It really will. It really will. You need to slow down. I, I, I've slowed down a lot, actually. Yeah. So yeah. it just, you know... Parrot just shows how awesome I am. You know, we were we were talking about uh, Dungeon Master Day. Wanted to know how I met you, and I, I you know, as we've talked about on the show, I was yeah. telling him when 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 Dad couldn't sell a book and he had to be a professor for a <laughs> summer. Mr. Jensen was one of my students, and I was telling him how you drove the three hours from New Jersey to go to class, and then you'd go home the same night and. and and uh, he asked me, he said, were you a good student? And I said, he, he's probably my best student, he's certainly my most successful. I don't know what that says about my well, teaching abilities. <laughs> it says a lot about the teaching abilities, but uh, I don't know that you can put good student and most successful student. I'm just the loudest student. Is that what it is? I, I think that's what it is. That I just, you know, everybody stop what you're doing and pay attention to me. <laughs> and that's, that's been my philosophy, and it, it seems to have worked pretty well. All right. So, so do you want to go just put the swear jar in front of Mr. Jensen, you think? Uh, sure. I think he's going to be using it the most. <laughs> Are you going to go out and play in the yard? Play in the house? No? All right. Well, I'll, he... I'll just make it easy. Here's my credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> You're not really getting my credit card. Dang it. <laughs> All right. That could be a lot. That's your Xbox One you, right there. You may, in fact, hear a couple words that you and the, the guys at school have not yet figured out. <laughs> so they, they, they know most of them at this. By, by the, they're, go, they're all going into sixth grade in a week. So well, they, they know, they, they know a lot. No, they absolutely do. Yeah. By, by yeah. sixth grade, sixth I knew a lot. Grade, yeah. But there is a Jersey lexicon. Woohoo! And, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you're just, he's not ready. Uh, yeah, he's not know, ready. New, New Jersey, agree. much like New England, New Jersey finds creative yes. ways to to yes. swear. Yes, so. when uh, there's there's one word that we use that um, I was already scolded for using by Dungeon Master, um, <laughs> and that word can be a noun, a verb, an adverb, mm -hmm. an adjective. Um, it can be <laughs> an, an adjunct to another noun or verb. It can it can a be a gerund even a gerund. Yes, my favorite is to use it as a gerund. You of know course. that that episode that you mentioned where where he scolded you yes. live on the air. That was your second appearance on the my show. Second appearance, yes. It is because I've been reposting all the classic episodes on YouTube. Yep, it is our most popular YouTube episode. Well, yeah, because I'm awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and if, if you notice that I keep stuttering, it's because I keep going to use my regular terminology and then I look at your kid <laughs> and I'm like, Dungeon Master! You little so-and-so! <laughs> I, I would like to hear a cleaned up version of a Christian Jensen. I think we're hearing I, one right now. I, 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 I have is, not yes, I have not used foul language once so far. Yeah, so far, I, being it's here, impressive. It's, it's, it's early. early. It's I've, early only to say I've only been drinking a little bit. He he, he came in with his pack. own. He has a purse pack of uh, American. <laughs> a purse pack. I like the purse pack. A purse pack. I know, though, 
it's like it's a little personal. It's like it's a like, personal a, like, like you get like a personal pizza. This is like a personal bottle of uh, wild turkey. Yeah. Okay, I wait. Feel, I feel like he wants to smash that ball over my head. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. I no, mean, do you think I would let him do that? No. So I had to, I had to defend Dungeon Master at the grocery store yesterday. True story. I I guy, heard. Guy in a big old pickup truck, not looking where he's doing, coming straight for my kid. So mm-hmm. I yank. I yanked Dungeon Master out of the way, and then me and the man had words. So, Dungeon something, Master, something Dungeon Master similar. heard me say a couple words oh, that he doesn't yeah. normally hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I look, Dungeon Master, I may be a, a drunkard and a foul mouth and just a general horrible, horrible human being. I have never <laughs> once bashed a bottle over a kid's head. <laughs> Largely... <laughs> Largely because there's still alcohol in this bottle. Yeah. So it's not going to waste perfect good while alcohol. While it's still full, you're safe. Yeah. When it's empty, <laughs> run. But now that's, that's whiskey. What do you think whiskey tastes like? Well, come here and find out. No. <laughs> come on now. This is the Jersey side. Come on. No. Come on it tastes. <laughs> Sit down. No. For a minute there. He was halfway there, though. He was halfway down the I table. Was. He was halfway down the Dave, table. when this episode's done, we need to really sit down and have a staff meeting on scheduling <laughs> and which co-hosts we have and which guests we have. Oh, my God. <laughs> you bring me to the middle of pencil tucky. Yeah. I even, Thank you. I even put in my fancy going out teeth. <laughs> And you're not going to let me give a boy who's clearly of age. He's going into sixth grade by now. By now, he should have been married, divorced, (laughs) and have a still in the backyard. Well, we do have the still in the backyard. I was going to say, one of those is true. I real, I'm just, I'm disappointed. And you know what? At some point, your dad's not going to be looking, and and me and you will do a shot. All right. (laughs) No, All right. No, no, no. Do you want to have that YouTube channel you keep begging us for? There. You don't want the YouTube channel no, anymore? No, whiskey's better. Okay. okay. <laughs> I feel this has gone terribly <laughs> wrong. We're five minutes in. By the way, this is, you will respect You're talking about the grocery day. store. I literally growled at two women at the grocery store the other day. I'm not joking. Because, you I've know, you guys know I've been very, very ill. And I've right. said the last couple weeks have been the most challenging for my health. Since my heart that surgery. Was hot. So I had to go to the store and I was not well. So I'm literally using the cart to, to keep me upright and, and I'm, I, I feel terrible. And these two women are standing in the middle of the aisle talking and in my way. And I want to get out of the store before I pass out. I literally go, <clears throat> and they're like, oh, sorry. And they moved. And I'm like, I'm going to do this all the time from now on. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my go-to at the grocery store is to, to just loudly look at somebody and go, well, it's nice to be the only person on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> that was me self-editing. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they give you a look, and I've, I've gotten into altercations with the elderly. I've gotten into altercations with all sorts of ethnic people. Have you ever um, hit anybody in the ankles with your cart? I've done that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've done oh, that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, I can't do yeah. any of this because uh, my grocery store... <laughs> Every time somebody recognizes me, every time. Uh, this this past week, I went yesterday, and it, it was the cashier. And when I handed him my card, he says, I thought you were Brian Keene. Hey, what's going on with this Thor series you're doing? Eh, dude, I just want to buy my groceries. What's going yeah, on with yeah, the yeah. end of the rising? You son of a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to... <laughs> no, no, is that how we segue? That's how yeah, we segue. That's how we, segue. <laughs> we have, unfortunately, two very sad news stories and then it's all Christian Jensen all the time. Uh, first Just of like all, it should be. Uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award winner Dennis Etchison passed away last week, uh, as we were recording, actually, which is why you didn't hear about it on last week's show. Um, he was 76. Etchison began publishing short stories back in the 60s. Uh, he became a full-time writer in 1976, when people could still afford to do that. Mm-hmm. Um his first book was a novelization of John Carpenter's The Fog. Really? Yep. And I did not know that. That's actually, I mean, as you know, for people like uh, Matt Serafini, for example, that mm-hmm. are really into collecting novelizations, Etchison is like the go-to. Um, he wrote them under his own name. He wrote them as Jack Martin. Uh, but he did Cronenberg's Videodrome. Mm-hmm. Um, he did wow. all of the novelizations for the Halloween franchise. Uh, yeah, I think all of those were done as Jack Martin. Um, you know, of course, other books, non-franchise novelizations included The Dark Country, Red Dreams, The Blood Kiss, The Death Artist, Talking in the Dark, Got to Kill Them All and Other Stories, A Long Time Till Morning, and many others. Um, he also wrote for television, including 
the short, too short and not often remembered Logan's Run television series. Oh, I remember that. Do you remember that, Phoebe? I do, I yeah? Do. I do not remember that. Um, and uh, <laughs> he served as a staff writer for HBO's The Hitchhiker series. Oh, I, I like that. love that I fucking like that. Yep. That series. <laughs> oh, there's one. There's one. Dungeon Master's on it. <laughs> and who that... are you? <laughs> Oh, I don't even know who this fool guy is, <laughs> and he's trying to get money out of me. <laughs> Matt, he's introduce to yourself. To a good cause. <laughs> yeah, this this is our our latest co-host, Matt Willison, Christian. Jensen. He'll let anybody co-host this thing, won't <laughs> Pretty much, he? Yeah. yeah, he will. <laughs> After me, <laughs> you know. have Lombardo. On. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that says a lot. So I said the only co-host that couldn't be here today is Lombardo. Oh my God! Well, wait, wait! Too. I just noticed that you Coop's got out like two more anymore. big oh, bottles. Oh, yeah, they, they oh, speaking of which, I found this at the liquor store. Yeah. Speaking of Cooper. And I bought it. It's probably not very good. Yeah. <laughs> Dungeon Master! I think we should count how many times I ha- he edits himself. Last time I counted how many times he swore. That's it. Now I need to count I've how many times I've counted five. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Coop we use is like, like the Stern Show uses, I don't know, Crackhead Bob. We call wait, wait, hold on, we wait. Now, first off, I want to say that I'm very happy with the Gilbert Gottfried Association that was made on the last episode for me. Okay. I've been a Gilbert Gottfried fan forever. Yeah. Oh. Although I'm not Jewish, I am a huge Gilbert Gottfried fan. And so when I, he's on the Stern Show, it's, it's magic. chaos. That's, you yeah. never know what's going to happen. I don't bring chaos with oh, me. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no. no. Says chaos. the man who just tried to give my, my 11-year-old <laughs> bad whiskey. It wasn't even good Hold on, wait, wait, no, hold on, wait. No, this is very good whiskey. This isn't regular wild turkey. If you're from New Jersey, Ooh. you son of a Ooh. Oh, <laughs> so and so. Oh, he's like, he's like hey, curse Go it ahead. up, curse it up. Do you have, do you have any cash? <laughs> How much cash you got? You're going to need a lot. All right, oh, this is master. I need you to go in the house and play Xbox. Right? <laughs> I, I have I have a hundred dollar gift card in my pocket right now. I'm thinking All right. I might want to. Uh, yeah. All I'll right. sponsor you at Fiverr. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> I've got a sponsor. Dennis Etchison's eulogy has gone completely off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, at this point I, it has. Uh, yes. uh, but you know it, what? I think he'd appreciate it. I think he would, too. I think he would, too. Um, I, my, I can't say I was friends with uh, Mr. Etchison. I, I knew him associationally. I think we probably said six words to each other uh, the entire time our paths crossed. And, and the first words was me shushing him. During Dick Lehman's memorial service, because he was in the back talking, and I thought he was too loud. So, yeah, maybe he would appreciate this. It's, it's strange how <laughs> he'd be like, you know, well, that Keen was a complete and utter asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's two bucks. Don't he, worry, he, I know, got he you. knows that. Word. We'll, we'll keep He's a tab. Tabs. I All got, right. I got a five dollars sponsor, so I'm good for another three. Of course, uh, you know, he edited uh, good on that many too. anthologies. I'm put it on the table right now. I like this guy. I'm going to let Matt and Christian do their own show. Yeah, I don't know. Um, want some I'm good. Cutting Edge, Meta Horror, of course, the Museum of Horrors. That's when I first started writing. That was one of the first ones. That, that wasn't HWA doing that? That was an HWA yeah. anthology. That's when I first... I, I think that might have been one of the, the last of the HWA anthologies. I mean, I know they they did a couple after that, but the last like the big last one that mega, got mass market yeah. and, you yeah. know... Um, I wanted to get into that so bad. And, I of course... My favorite, Gathering the Bones, that he co-edited with Ramsey Campbell and Jack Dan. Um, speaking of HWA, Etchison served as president of the Horror Writers Association from 1992 to 1994. Um, I think, uh, was it David Nell Wilson or Janet Berliner that took over after that? I think it was Janet. I think it was I Janet so, took yeah. over yeah. after that. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, and then he, uh, he, of course, you know, goes without saying, he was a multiple, multiple, World Fantasy and British Fantasy Award nominee, as well as a two-time winner of each of those awards. Um, and as I said, he uh, also received the Bram Stoker Lifetime Achievement Award. He is survived by his wife, Christina. Um, so, yeah, Dennis Etchison, you know, a- another legend gone. Um, more sad news this week. Uh, friend of the show, constant listener, prolific and renowned horror book reviewer Frank Michaels Arrington also passed away due to complications from his stents placement. Um, he was 67, I believe. Yeah. He was about 67. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, um, that's really sad. You know, we I, saw him yeah. last mm-hmm. month. Yeah, we saw him at Kelly Kelly's Owen's uh, birthday, birthday party. party. Christian, that was where you first met him, I believe. He's dead? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. yeah. 
yep. It's very sad. Passed away that, uh, yeah. two days ago. Well, I should remind wow. the audience, we are recording this on Saturday, June 1st. You won't hear it until next week. So if, you know, if anybody else could try not to pass away between now and then, yeah, I don't want people to think we weren't yeah. reporting yeah. on it. Yeah, that, I mean, he even reached out to me on Facebook immediately after Kelly's birthday. Yeah. Right? Looking forward to, to checking out some of my books and... You know how what a pleasure it was to meet me. Well, obviously, he doesn't know me because nobody that's ever met me thinks it's a pleasure. But <laughs> he was really. But that sweet. was he was, was a, a really guy. nice guy. Uh, he was. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Um, you know, he was a a former radio personality for years. He worked in the Lehigh Valley in Tucson and Philly. Uh, he was Frank Michaels. Um, I think I actually, in some of my radio cassette tapes, I think I actually have a Frank Michaels sound check, and I, really? I want to look if I can find it and Aww. digitize it. I, I'd like his wife to. But uh, yeah, he and I used. It. That's how we bonded. We didn't. We didn't bond at first over horror. We bonded over radio stories. But uh, yeah, you know, he uh, when he retired, he became a book reviewer. Um, his reviews appeared in Cemetery Dance, his blog, and elsewhere. Um, they he was highly sought after by authors of note, including myself. That that's the testament for a book reviewer. When you have authors coming to you right. saying, "Hey." I want Please you to review, review my, my book. book. You know, that that's a mark of excellence right there. Um, you know, his reviews were praised by fellow critics and reviewers as well, including the esteemed Jack Haringa. Um, if Jack says something nice about you... <laughs> if Jack says something nice, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you're doing something right. Um, you know, uh, his reviews earned him, in fact, the Indie Horror Book Award for reviews. So, uh, you know, he... Right before he passed, he had just crossed the 700 review threshold. Wow, wow that is um, amazing! You know, and that's wow. since retirement. So he was 67 when he passed. You know, 700 reviews. He 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 loved the genre. Uh, you know, he he said in an interview, he said, uh, "I quote, I started doing this because I'd constantly hear writers saying how important reviews were." And I wanted to do something more than just post to Amazon and Goodreads, which I still do. For the last few years, I've read more than 100 books a year. End wow. quote. Wow. My gosh. You know so, what else fantastic. I thought was, yeah. was wonderful about Frank was that a lot of times, because we were friends on Facebook, just how much he adored his wife. Just how how pleased he was and and grateful he was to have her. It was just, it was so cute. Like, he was just the kind of person who just loved life and embraced life and and really wanted to do right by the people in it you know and yeah. i just he was a nice guy it's 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 sad that he's gone he, he it is and you as you mentioned you know he's survived by his wife kathy uh he has several brothers several nieces one nephew i believe um and other family and and of course you know his extended family in the horror genre um you know i i i you know, posted something on social media, as you do. Uh, and I, I said, uh, you know, he, yeah, he was a cheerleader for the horror genre, but he, he was very much just the quintessential reader and fan. I always tried to find him at conventions, or like you said, the last time we saw him, Kelly's house, because I would, I would ask him, who's, who's he reading that he's excited about? You know, half these new authors I discover... Yeah. It's me looking around, but a lot of them came from Frank. Frank, oh, you got to check this person out. You got to check this person out. He was very good about that, you know. And Christian, I guarantee you, if he reached out to you and said, you know, it was a, it was a pleasure meeting you, mm -hmm. he meant it. Now, once he got to know you, of course, oh, he then, then that it changes back, absolutely. But, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if you had a chance to get anything into his hands or not. But I, 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 I did not, and, know. and I, I regret it too because you know, just to, somebody so prolific and. and so profound in the genre to to influence uh, not not influence but i mean yeah influence in a way too to the authors that he's reading and and just be a part of it as as a fan and as a reviewer and i mean just a, as a general nice guy I, I talked to him for for quite a little bit at kelly's before i really knew who he was right and uh yeah it's always nice when somebody appreciates what you do on on an on a level like that and to have so much other foreknowledge and I have having read the greats, but haven't read so much other stuff. Someone that prolific as as a reader to to get your stuff in their hands, right, is fantastic. But you know, he definitely <clears throat> seemed like a genuine, very nice guy, and uh, and yeah, he didn't wait. I mean, I had a message from him the next day that it was a pleasure meeting me and the friend request and all that. Yeah. So he, you know, he he took it to heart, and 
and it was uh, yeah. I really had no idea that he had passed, and I'm I'm kind of bummed out right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I didn't know uh, till Mary told me. I guess the, the the morning after, I knew he I knew he was sick. I knew he was ill, but I just I haven't been doing Facebook because I've been busy with Thor. <laughs> so, by the way, Dave, yes. if I ever 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 <laughs> ever mm-hmm. agree. To do another comic book property or comic book property tie-in, mm-hmm. I want you to take that bottle of bad whiskey Christian Jackson's it? drinking it's over there. It's good and whiskey. Over the head with yeah. It. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. No, I'll do that yeah. because you need to stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dungeon Master needs to be the deciding factor. You want to see how good this whiskey is? <laughs> Come here, find out. Tell no. your father this is Sit good down. whskey. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna have a YouTube channel, twelve year old review and whiskeys would be really popular. <laughs> that channel. would be fantastic. <laughs> I will I'm, fund that channel. I, I'm done. Oh, man. Yeah. I've got, like, I, I almost have his mother convinced uh, that we can make this YouTube channel work without giving away his identity. Okay. And and now she's going to listen to this episode, uh, yeah. and that you, she won't let you have one until you're 21 now. Yeah, probably. Well, Mexican At which point, I'll let you have the whiskey. <laughs> so you have two things to look forward to when you're 21. At 20, no, he has to have whiskey before he's 21. No, I didn't. What? What? Oh, that is... No. Wait, 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 I have three more dollars. Wait, wait, bullshit. Wait, wait, that's wait, bullshit. Wait, you're wait, a fucking liar. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Mary. That's Mary. my three dollars. I want to ask you a question, Mary. I do yes. have more money. Which is more believable? <laughs> if he didn't have whiskey until he's 21, or he looks like Shamar Moore? <laughs> oh, that's putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, I can tell you no that shame. I am absolutely that looks sure like this, yeah. this that is... he has had whiskey okay, before he was 21. <laughs> yeah. I know this for a fact. Yes. I don't know about any of this. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to figure out like who Shamar, Shamar Moore is. To me. Shamar Moore's uh, the, the really cut dude from Criminal Minds. Uh, well, that's what I'm being told. Like Brian show. can't look like him because he's svelte and cut and good looking. <laughs> That, that, that's what I was just told by. Oh, <laughs> I think you're well, all certain those. people. <laughs> now look certain at Mary. people. Oh, well, but that's it's exactly I, you. I, <laughs> I was I only think, laughing. I, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Because now I'm on the spot. I think Shamar Moore is a different kind of beautiful than Brian. Brian is one kind of beautiful. Yes, that's circles well are beautiful. Yeah, well oh, shit. Shamar oh. Moore is a different kind of beautiful. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds and Tom Hiddleston are two other different kinds. Yes, of and there's there's also you know people that are. In, in the Olympics, they're special human beings I'm, because they're so athletic and amazing at what they do. And then there's people in the Special Olympics <laughs> that are special because of how they were born. Brian we're is doomed. Good Why looking. did we have him on again? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Six appearances were enough. You think we'd learn our lesson? <laughs> okay, wait, well, hold on. Wait, I can answer that question because you need ratings, and I bring them. <laughs> He's got a point there. Yeah, you know, uh, All right. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. you know. Um. Christian, where is this so-called sponsor that's going to <laughs> Yeah, because... Hey, I paid for his swear. I, I, w- I would help sponsor your YouTube channel if it's a bourbon-tasting YouTube channel. Oh. All right, well, you got to wait till you're 21, then. <laughs> no, then well, what, what kind that. of YouTube channel do you want to do there, young Dungeon Master? Uh, me and my friend were talking about setting up one for just kind of like gaming and stuff. Hmm. I think that'd be fun. I think that they would be good. can't show their faces, and they can't use their real names, and it can't be associated with anything that Dad is doing. So That's it's got to be their a own. A lot of people on YouTube do it that Yeah, their way. own yeah. private it's you know smart. thing. Yeah. Okay, so. And no, no, I can't believe I have to add this now to the rules, but no alcohol either, Dungeon Master. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, no, I mean, you can do some kind of a, a like a half mask or, you know, something like that. Like a like a like a Mexican luchador wrestling mask. <laughs> no, nope, just screenshots of the TV. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. audio over. Yeah. Well, over audio the over the sub. That. Yeah. yeah sure. Why not? Voice so. I, I. How can I help? <laughs> you can't. You do can't. I? Do I need to write a letter to my you mom? You can help no. by remember, staying remember, away. Remember the talk we had a year ago where I said not, just because somebody's a an adult, it doesn't mean they, that they necessarily know what they're talking about. Yeah. This is this is a good example. <laughs> Whoever called me an adult? <laughs> That's an Where insult. Where is that person? I would find him and cut him down at the knees. All right. Well, before we get to our very special <laughs> guest, the special, special Olympics. He emphasized special. I want to <laughs> remind folks uh, that Keyport Cthulhu 2 by Armand Rosamilia and Chuck Buddha is available now on Amazon and as also part of Kindle Unlimited. Um, if you're into cosmic horror at all. Then you're into this book. I mean, you know, esoteric order of Dagon, Cthulhu, 
Uh, you know, what else do you need? Well, I'll tell you what else you need. It has a foreword by cosmic horror professor Mary San Giovanni. <laughs> yes, it does. So there you go. Who wrote, who wrote the book? Armand, Rosamilia, and Chuck Buddha. Never heard of him. <laughs> I can name a bunch of other things you could need. Well, but <laughs> but the idea. Well, is you, you that would need they a don't plot. Want anything. You else would need because, characterization because we have None. to sell the book. <laughs> this has gone horrible. I mean, yeah, I could name uh, I fifty name Brian Key need. books that they need before they need keep your. But w- what we want them to think is they need keep Port Cthulhu too. Yeah, but they also need to buy food to eat, and if they're just going to read books for four and days, bourbon to drink, right? Yes. yes. Right. See, so after after <laughs> you've fed your family, stop sitting by your dad. Come over, sit yes. by me. You know what? It's more fun you know over here. It's on Kindle <laughs> Unlimited, so they can get it for free on Kindle. You raise a good point, Dungeon Master. No, don't go sit next to Mister Christian. <laughs> Remember we talked about stranger danger? Stranger <laughs> okay, wait, danger, I'm not right? a stranger. He's he's met me before. He's still in danger though. <laughs> All right, well <laughs> But can we wait, 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 hold on. I don't want people thinking I'm a pedophile. Can we define the danger? It's more like emotional danger <laughs> and alcoholism danger. <laughs> like I'm not I like that he felt he had to qualify. That. I want to qualify my danger here. I don't want anybody thinking that I'm inappropriate. I just want the young man to have some whiskey and hang out and you know Oh yeah, that doesn't sound inappropriate. No. I want you to sit next to me and have some bourbon. You know what I love most young about boy. this day? Come here, young yeah. boy. Get out, out near me everything. get salty. You know what I love most about this? <laughs> you know, Project Entertainment Network, what, we have 25 shows on Something the like that about, yeah. We finally land this huge advertiser, the National University <laughs> MFA <laughs> program. Yeah. And the very first show we yeah. have with them as a sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what people are thinking of a pedophile. So, wait, so whose fault is that? Who does the scheduling for this show? I remember somebody telling me, you have an open invitation and can come whenever you want. That's if you want to drive three hours every That's week, true. I would have you on the show I every would, week. And I would. I would. And you know what? I would drive three hours every week. This is fun. We know you would. <laughs> you know, let's talk about that. I mean, you've been on the show countless times. Now... Or over time, four, but you know, no, it's been more than six. four. I'm, I'm counting the telethons, the telethons as well. Yeah, yeah. it's six. Which That's... the next telethons in Cali? Cali. Are yep. you paying for me to come out there? I am not. Uh, I I would like to <laughs> look. I'd, no, I'd love no, to I'm get sick. you and Kelly and Bob and Malfi and put you all in a van and drive you out there. But I just no. It's it's. Raising money for charity. If I pay for all that, it's less money that's going to. Well, the I mean, if the charity pay for, it, but you personally, you should just front the bill and you know I'll drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to drive, Matt doesn't like to fly. I don't like to fly. I all right. Well, flying. there you go. Oh there you go. Oh my God, we need to have. And you need to a, live tweet it or live. Stream. We need to have. First of yes, all, any idea you it. have coming out of your head right now, you can just zip it. <laughs> Because it's going to be stupid. <laughs> Whoa! Stupid Whoa. in the sense of you're just trying to put me in harm's way. She's a Jersey girl, buddy. I know. Do you know? Hold on. Hold on. No, this has been. I got this. This has been Thank brewing you. for many of <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, wait, who's is bigger? I I wait, um, mine's I, bigger. I think, Yours is longer, but mine's girthier. Think he's about <laughs> to they both pulled out knives. Matt and Christian both. They're comparing knife just, sizes. I, and I love that they just both automatically reach in their pockets and. <laughs> I like him now. I don't know. I don't. I still don't know who the fuck he is. Damn it! Now I need a dollar. They're two dollars. <laughs> right, focus. Oh, Look, it's just you okay. and me now. Just no one else me. is in the room. Okay. okay. It's, it's getting sexy. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say something nice. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you've been on the show all those times. <laughs> what I've noticed over time, you seem to be growing more and more focused and energized about acting than you are with writing. No. Do you think that's a fair assessment? No. No. Um. Writing is always going to be my first number one passion. There's no doubt about that. The acting is a fun distraction. And it's a dream from when I was younger than Dungeon Master. When it was growing up in Jersey, as, as Mary can attest to, there's, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I grew up in... A small town in, in a big area. Right. So it wasn't a small town in the sense that, you know, out, out here where mm. there's farms around you. But we, we have these small, small town towns in different. Jersey yeah. where it's it's a small town, it's blue collar, and everybody keeps to themselves. Yes. We do everything within our town. And I grew up in a, in a school with, there was 22 people in my graduating class in my grammar school. Um, we had 
we did everything together, me, me and my group of friends. And the, the biggest thing that we did was on Friday nights after school, we would all make plans. We would sleep over somebody's house. We'd have six or eight guys sleeping over at somebody's house. We would go to the, to the Palmer video that was, that was run by a guy named Miguel. I can still remember. You call them up, he'd answer, Palma video, Miguel. <laughs> Every time. And we would, we would either reserve horror movies or we'd just go down as a collective group and mm-hmm. we would pick out horror movies. That was before Mystery Science Theater 3000, but we were still doing them. We were looking for the worst horror movies we could find. Yes! And we would do the MST2K on them. We would get yep. pizza. As we got a little bit older and could drive around, we were getting beer with our pizza. But mm-hmm. you know, before then, we would just steal whiskey when we were 11 years old and drink that while we <laughs> ate our pizza and, and watch our movies. But, I mean, I had been a reader before then. But watching these movies and watching them with my friends, and these guys are like my brothers. I'm still close with every single one of them. The guys I went to grammar school with, I'm still good friends with. Right. We watched these movies. We slept over. We, I mean, we, you know, we'd go night swimming. We'd break out, you know, sneak out of the house and go over to girls' houses and do the things that, you know, you know, kids do at that age. But it was always centered around watching a couple horror movies. And I never in my life said, I'm going to be an actor. But the, the notion of being in, for lack of a better term, a bad horror movie, the, the low-budget horror films, like the trauma movies. Right. That to me was like, if, if I could do it, it looks like so much fun to make these movies. I want right. to see what it's like. And you've had Steve Boliak on. Yes, we have. Um, Steve gave me my first shot ever in a film called Zomboner 2. <laughs> um, and it was, I was, I was friends with and actually trying to have conjugal relations with an actress who was in Zomboner 2. And just in talking to her, she's like, oh, well, I can't hang out with you tomorrow and do debauchery, which you require for the Dark Lord Satan, because I'm going to be filming this movie. And I was like, oh, hey, you know what? I'll give you a ride up there if you need a ride. You know, I just want to be on set on this movie. And she said, well, let me make sure it's okay with the with the director. So she called up Steve Boliak and, and Steve was like, oh, yeah, you know what? I got a guy that canceled on me. I need somebody else. I'll give him a part. So I thought I'm going to be like, you know, guy number seven in the background scene. Right. I had I actually have the first lines in that movie. And I told him, I don't want to mess up your movie. And he kind of laughed. He's like, you can't mess this crap up. <laughs> you know, I was like, it's they called, are very self-aware. Trauma. It's called Zomboners. <laughs> like, seriously, like, what do you think you're going to do to this? And I took it serious. But on that film, I met Rita Christine, who who's in uh, several movies with me. Um, Jenny Janetti, I met um, uh, a, a, some guy that passed away that turned out he actually was a pedophile and a piece of garbage. He's a, he was a piece of shit, right. actually. Shit, he was a piece of shit, that guy. Um, but I met all these people that were in, in the industry that you know, just because of my, my, my attitude, my personality, my, you know, just, just the way that I, I enjoy getting along included me in some of the other projects they were doing. And that led me to other projects and I, I've probably done half dozen maybe ten movies all low budget all small <clears throat> stuff all real low profile stuff um, and I, I've been been happy and excited and really proud to do all of them but the the one that we just did the one that we just did the premiere for the return of the slasher nurse right I can't tell you how ridiculously proud I am of that movie seeing seeing slasher nurse which is available on Amazon Prime so if you have Amazon Prime check out um it's a curse of the curse of the slasher nurse. It's a very amateurish. Um, it's it's in that that tone of the the, the independent horror films where it was a, a, a guy who got a bunch of his friends together and he wrote a script and he did it. If you pay attention, the scripting is brilliant. It really is. Uh, Dave Kerr is is the the guy who did it. He's he's amazing. He, his scripts are phenomenal and his directing style is fantastic. But the, the the acting's poor, the lighting's poor, the sound is poor. It's it's a first attempt at making a film, right? And he he made this film, a complete film, front to back. Which you know people can can watch and go, oh, this is garbage. The acting sucks. These people suck. To actually make a film, and you you've same, been involved. Same right? thing as writing a novel. It's, you know, it everybody takes, says they're going to do it. Yeah, five percent of those people yeah. actually do. Exactly. You know, and, and you, a, a quarter of that percentage do it well. Exactly. And. 
I'm still waiting to get in that quarter of a percent. <laughs> <by> the <way. laughs> in the meantime, I just keep putting out filth and you know, making money. I read one of your books and enjoyed it very much. Which one? The which one? Oh, yeah, that was yeah. That's actually really good. So, these guys you grew up with yeah. watching these movies, what do they think of all this? Um, they think it's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do viewing parties with with most of them when, when I, I bring them together, and it's... I mean, the, the first thing is because there's, there's graphic nudity in a lot of these movies. So the first thing is, you know, oh, look look at the tits, you know. And it's, you know, oh, do, do you know that chick? Do you know that chick? And, you know, it becomes a joke. But it, it's funny. Like, we sit there and we laugh and we joke and we talk around through through the, the entire movie. But the second I'm on scene, everybody's quiet. Everybody Aww. watches me act. That's awesome. Then they make fun of me afterwards. But, <laughs> but, but they have the respect while I'm on scene that it's, you know, they, they, right. they watch it. They see what's going on. For your eighth appearance on this show. Oh, eighth. Yeah. Okay. I want I want those guys. <laughs> oh yes. Like a round table. Panel I want you to, to bring them. <laughs> thinking they're just gonna chill in the background and then no, I'm gonna lock you out of the studio. I want them <laughs> on the air. Wow, okay, well if you were a smarter man, you wouldn't have told me that. <laughs> You'll forget. <laughs> You'll forget. Have, He's drinking New Jersey whiskey. It's one of in the bourbon. afternoon. And you're <laughs> well, I, w- I was drinking well before then, but I brought. I actually brought you some Woodford Reserve. You're a good man. I take you're back a good everything. Man. I, see, now, Dungeon Master, that is good whiskey. Okay, you come still over here and you try still some Woodford can't Reserve. Have any. <laughs> But when no, when you're 21, you know what you know what whiskey he is tastes so like. Happy looking. You know what whiskey tastes like. Whiskey tastes like fire, and a tree had a baby together and then set it on fire. That's and then what whiskey doused it like. in nail polish remover and a little dirt. Yeah, that is very accurate. Actually, that still sounds like it would sound like a fine cuisine. No, it's yes. not a fine Dun- cuisine. Dungeon Master, this, is this is truly this is your son. What, what your father doesn't want you to know. If there was any doubt. <laughs> what your father doesn't want you to know is that, that bourbon especially tastes like awesome and turns you into a superhero. It does not. <laughs> it does not. It does not. The things you can do when you have a belly full of bourbon. Will get you in jail. Yes. <laughs> okay, but think of the amazing stories that you have about being in jail. <laughs> After an amazing night of drunken debauchery I, and horribleness, and all those things that happened, that amazing get you in the jail, and jail like should ever go to jail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like crafting a shank out of a broken bourbon bottle and stabbing exactly. someone. Are you sure he's not my kid? <laughs> you know, I didn't. I did not clear this for you before you came here, and you can tell me live on the air. No, we're not going to talk about that. But something, all the years I've known you, and all the times you've been on the show, something we never have really touched on okay you spent some time in the the prison system i did do you want to talk about we touched that? on this a little bit we did we, we touched on yeah, it yeah. i think at one of the uh oh the at telethon one of the telethon when i was sleeping i was sleeping you were sleeping okay. and i was zooted out of my mind on cocaine so all right well there we go <laughs> now so do you, we now do you understand again? why i don't want you hanging out with him um, kind of, kind of. Okay. <laughs> he still sounds like drugs are bad I mean, do you <laughs> I, I have also, and Dungeon Master knows this, I, I have also had my brushes with the law. Mm-hmm. I think brushes. I've <laughs> pulled stuff from that yes. for use in fiction. Do you think you've done the same? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. The, the difference is, while you've had your brushes with the law, um, I was on the side of law and order. <laughs> Which yes. is something most people don't something, <laughs> expect something, about you. That is, that is absolutely something people don't expect, that I was an officer of the law. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was I was a uh, state of Delaware corrections officer. Yep, uh, auxiliary state police officer. Oh, wow. And uh, hmm. yes, yes, I uh, I carried. <laughs> and then it all went downhill. It, well, it was downhill way right before that. <laughs> then, you, you'd then, be amazed then, at what they'll take as a CEO. Then he took a class <laughs> with some burned out mid list horror writer as his teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a very long time ago. Um, yeah, no, I, I have no issue talking about my time and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you ever stay in touch with any? Like, do they know what you're up to these days? The inmates, like the other COs. <laughs> the no. Inmates. Well, yeah. I mean, that, I figure that's who's reading your books. But I, I meant like the other COs. And actually, I, I'm. Uh, I will be going to a 50th wedding anniversary um, for one of uh, one of my my ex partners. Yeah. Will uh, you do a screening of your movie there? I will absolutely not do a screening <laughs> of my movie there. But um but I, I think he'll be very excited to find out everything I've been up to yeah. since uh since the last time. So when you're other. when you're on set. Yes. Now the indie indie movies like low budget indie movies, you're talking what, a weekend for the shoot? 
a couple weekends. Well, but the, you're, you're uh, not writing while you're on set, right? You, no, I'm not. No. Yeah. No. When uh, w- when I do my work with Slasher Fifteen Productions, which is which is who we're, we're working with right now, um, they're out of Virginia, so it's a five to six hour drive to get out on set. Right. So regardless of how much set time I have, what's going on, it's we try to condense my filming to a day or, or two days at most. Right. And they, they, they've been actually really great. Um, I found them by accident. A friend of mine, Rita Christine, who's one of the stars of Bloody Summer Camp, um, she recommended me from some of our other work together. And, and her and I are a part of another production company, Midnight Light Storm Entertainment. You'll see us at, at Scares of Care. Um, she's been at Scares for, for all 15 years. Last year, uh, the, um, we, had, we had a ball last year, the year before that. Um, we're, we're always together at the tables at Scares. Right. But uh, I, I've worked with Rita for probably almost as long as I've known you, probably seven to ten years. Right. And we've been on countless sets together. We, we've had a, a ball doing stuff. And, and somebody backed out, and Rita was on set, and, and the, the producer was kind of pissed that you know the, this, this actor had backed out. And she said, well, I know somebody. She says, he'll come up, but he's in Jersey, so you may have to, you know, you'll have to work with him. And one of the hardest things when you're doing indie horror is getting people to show up. Because everybody says, oh, yeah, no, I want to be in a horror movie. Yeah, I'd love to be in a horror movie. But then you're like, okay, well, Saturday you have to be on set. And, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to be there. And for a month, you'll remind them. And for a month, oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. And then right before, like, ah, you know what? I got to take my kid to the dentist. Okay, well, you made a commitment to be there. Right. Yeah. And But people think that because it's, it's indie horror, because it's not like a major studio, that they can pick and choose when they show up, when they go. And it... Making a commitment to anything, you're making a commitment. If you say you're going to be there, you're going to be there. I've taken that approach with with all my publishers that if I commit that I will have this novel done by June, that novel is done. Hell or high water by June. Right. You know, if if it's a film set, you if I tell you I'm going to be there on Saturday, I'm going to be there Saturday. Dave, and, I noticed. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. That air conditioner is getting louder. Do you think the board is it'll, picking it'll it up? It'll be fine. No, it'll be fine. It. All right. It, yeah. So. You go to a con, you go to a signing, you know how it is. You come yep. away energized and ready to write. Do you get that same energy on the set? Like, do you come off the set ready to write? Yeah, yeah, and the set gives you different ideas. The, the set gives you, I get a different, a different feeling for, for what you're doing because write, writing is such a solitary act. You, you sit at your desk and there's nobody else. And you're, you're writing that book and really you're writing that book for yourself. You don't have any other feedback. You don't have other people buying into it. You don't have other people telling you that it's amazing or it sucks or this is a great idea or, or what have you. But when you're on set with a bunch of other like-minded individuals and everybody's participating in it and you have a writer, you have a director, you have a half dozen actors there's there's a confluence of energy that doesn't normally take place when you're writing a book. It's a collaborative. It's a it's a collaborative kind of effort. Thing. And right. when when I went on set for Return of the Slasher Nurse, it was a lot of guys that had never been on a set before. Guys, a lot of guys that had never done a movie before. And having been, I'm not exactly a veteran, but I, I've done I've been on my fair share of sets. I've done my fair share of movies, so I kind of jumped in where I felt some people needed some help and I I, I kind of calmed everybody down and I you know joked around a little bit and and during some of my takes I would deliberately mess up some of the takes and and throw some outtakes in there and just just because everybody gets uptight when when they're on set so you you, you loosen everybody up and you get a better product out of it but when you walk away from it there's this you know well the director had a great idea the writer had a great idea the cinematographer had a great idea we we had we had a woman on set um, for Return of the Slash Nurse that just did continuity, and she would tell you that well th- this bottle should be over here not over here and we need to move this out of the way and and well you know th- th- this character said this in the previous scene so why don't we move this over to here and you can use this when you, and you start seeing things three dimensional and it's it just changes the way that you absolutely do things. Now, Dungeon Master just walked out of the door, so fuck, 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 everybody, fuck this, fuck that, fuck you, fucking, fucking, fuck. I've been waiting for him, he's a great kid, but I'm like, when he walks out the door, I'm gonna motherfuck everybody. 
Well yeah, spoken. I, I, turned off, <laughs> I turned off the AC and opened the door, and that, that was it. He, like I could t- a, like a moth. I could tell he was getting bored. <laughs> I mean, he loves you, and he loves being on the air. But I could tell this was this was all starting to go over his head. Oh yeah, but, yeah. But, he but and getting any bourbon, so he's out. Uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no. <laughs> So Phoebe says that, and he comes back in the studio. So no, I... So. All right. Um, I'll wait. Dungeon Master has a question. That's okay. why. So, oh, by the way, I heard you say all those... Um, <laughs> and what do you think about that, young man? Um, I think you were very much anticipating to say all those... <laughs> I absolutely... Now, do you think the audience anticipated me saying those words? Um... Maybe, maybe not. Like, maybe it's a 50-50 split. Like a 50-50 split? Okay. But. Also, um, I have a question about your movie, but no, and no offense, but it's called Bloody Summer Camp, right? Yes. Um, that sounds a lot like the Friday the 13th movies. That's actually a very good point. And it's intended to sound a little bit like the Friday the 13th movies because that's exactly the idea. That's my kid with yeah. the astute observation. Absolutely. Nice. And that, that, is, that is a very, very impressive observation. The whole purpose of the movie is... Now, you know what a, what a throwback is. You know what retro is, right? And that we're making a retro movie. It's an 80s style. And it takes place in the 80s. So we're going back to, to the 80s. Now, why do you think, Dungeon Master, why would we want to make a film in the 80s? Um, maybe it just grabs more people's attention. Okay, but what what did what do you have now that we didn't have in the eighties? Um, we have the internet. Yes. We have um better video games. Yes. <laughs> how, well, how, I mean, how do you yeah, how do you that's how a would point you point of opinion? Now right? say say you wanted to uh, <laughs> say you wanted to call your mother and tell her that some creepy bearded guy is trying to give you bourbon. How would you call her? What would you use to call um, her? A cell phone. Yes. Do we have them in the 80s? No. No. That's right, because we're old as dirt. There were no <laughs> cell phones in the 80s. Well, unless you were a Coke dealer in L.A. <laughs> well, that's, you know, but then, then you had a suitcase. Yeah, yeah and they were, but, they were huge. So now let me ask you something. Now, if you're in the woods and there's a killer that's trying to get you today, would it be easier today to, to call and get help? Or would it be easier in the 80s to call and get help? I'm easier today. That's right. So that makes it a little better atmosphere to make a movie in the 80s because how are you going to call for help? Well, um, if the killer was inside your house back in the 80s, they had the giant wall-mounted phones. So. But what if he cuts the line? Yeah. That's uh, true. So now you can't call for help, and that's our idea. So we take a bunch of campers in the 80s, and we put them there, and people start getting killed off, and you're in a camp. And you're far away from even a main road. So you can't go for help. And you can't call for help. There's no help coming. It's just you. And you this can't is, look it up on Google how this to is, stop this, serial killers. This is why when, you're, when your scout leader said, oh, the kids can't bring cell phones camping, I said, my, my child will have his cell phone because Christian Jensen is out there in those woods. <laughs> With whiskey. Okay, for the record, I am not stalking Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, any Scouts. He has to quantify that. I'm a decent human being, goddammit. He's just lurking around the shadows of the forest in a Boy Scout camp with bottles of whiskey. (laughs) Hey, little boy, you want to get your drink on? We're going to get him this time. (laughs) Where's that Brian Keene? He ain't nowhere to stop me now. Now I want to I want to come That's back. That's the movie around. they should make. I want to come back around to Bloody Summer Camp. Um, yes. you guys are doing the Kickstarter. For we it are. Right we're, now. we're doing a Kickstarter. Now keep in mind this is being recorded uh, June first, but it's just about fifty percent. It's right? We're, we're right about fifty percent. Awesome. Um, the, the first week we kind of jumped out solid, and we we got to to close to that fifty percent mark in the first week. It's an all or nothing campaign. So if you donate five dollars right now or a hundred dollars right now, nothing comes out of your bank until the campaign is over it's a 30-day campaign so by the time you hear this will be about a week and a half left or so so if you enjoyed this episode if you enjoyed christian's appearance if you enjoyed the fact that he's real and he's honest and he's telling it like it is (laughs) i'm 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 actually pretty far or or you know if you just enjoy this show and you want to support a, a dear friend of ours go to kickstarter bloody summer camp Give them a buck right now, or ten bucks. Or, That's right, you know. and not to mention, there's a ton of really, really cool gifts. That, well, not gifts, I guess, but they're like perks. incentives. Yeah. The perks. You can actually be the killer in this. You can be a victim oh. in this. You, you know what? I, I, I heard them already talk about it a little bit, but I mean, 
for for me, the chance to to be on set came from luck and a lot of hard work. And I, I've driven upwards of 10 hours, 15 hours to, to, to be in some of these movies. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that. A lot of people don't have the means to do that. And to to work your way onto a set, especially now, th- this one's a little, there, there, there's a, a budget with this one. There's a, a at some point to be announced celebrity guests that's that a celebrity actor that's going to be involved in this project. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on this that, that makes this movie a lot bigger in scope than the the previous two films. And this that, is what Dave's third film. This is Dave's third film. Does he feel well? I, I I I mean, you can't speak for him and tell him we'd love to have him on the show. Oh, absolutely. He was he actually but, was really upset he couldn't be here, but he's doing a Facebook. Well, you got this isn't live, but there's a Facebook live going on tonight that will be available on the Bloody Summer Camp page on Facebook that he, you can see. He he's got to be feeling the pressure, right? Oh, I mean, bigger big budget, time. Big you know. Time. Yeah, there's there's a lot with it that uh, there's there's more stress to it, but this is more of a, a passion project. Yeah, and it's it's for everybody involved. We always wanted to do something like this, and and actually we we being my, my girlfriend Christine and I. Do you want to say I, that? Christine? Wanna, I I didn't oh, know if hi. we could say that you were here or not. So <laughs> we, we we I mean we can't, but we are. But whatever, <laughs> who gives a shit? You know, such is life. Christine, are you okay? Blink, <laughs> blink, blink if you blink need an intervention. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. She. She is. She is. Show us on the doll where the whiskey touched you. <laughs> here, 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 and here. Oh my! <laughs> All right. So I want to come oh back my. to Bloody Summer. Yeah. Okay. Back, back to Bloody our, Summer. Our yeah. listeners are going to make it happen. Okay. They, I, but, I, that's why we're here. But you're also a writer. I am. And also our a listeners writer. know you as a writer. That is yes. Um. Do. And Matt. Who has never had the the privilege of being in the studio? Lucky with you. You. <laughs> uh, you know. Yes, yes, yes. You you've self published a lot of your stuff. I have. Matt's yes. got all kinds of questions about self publishing. Um, do you? So I do because he told me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we brought Matt on. What are you most looking forward to? The fact that you're going to have authors, and I can I can ask him questions. Cause, you know, Matt wants to be a writer. This oh, is absolutely. the path he's chosen. Yes. So, and and here's you the fool. first here's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get him Robert Swartwood. Swartwood's like, nah. <laughs> we, we, we went through every talented author we knew, and none of them answered the phone. But you <laughs> have nothing else going on. So that that's how uh, how Harry became a judge on. But Night no, Court. his his first book, Edge of Twilight, he self published and okay, uh, and you know you have a lot of self publishing knowledge. I I, I, I mean I, you're a successful I mean, self publisher. You banned from Amazon and you're still there. You go. To that's sell books. yes. I am so, so successful. I can't sell my book. What you know? <laughs> what advice would you give him for 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 marketing and promoting this book that that he's already got out? Um, to keep it simple, Facebook is shit. Yes, I've come to realize Facebook. That. <laughs> Facebook will get you absolutely nowhere. Yeah, um, it's it's good for networking with other authors. It's good for for meeting other people, things like that. Um, but you will never sell a book off of Facebook, no matter how much money you put into it. Um, it's still okay for certain other things, mm-hmm. but for 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 books, for getting readers, um, no. You you can get reviewers off of there, right? But you'll have to give them a free copy of your book. But okay. that's not a bad thing. No. I'm not, I'm not against giving people free things to get, you know, feedback out of stuff. Because more than anything, I just want to know what people think of it, too. Absolutely. Um, Twitter's pretty good for, for promoting. Um, really, like, a, a venue like like this, the award-winning podcast, The Horror Show with Brian Keene, <laughs> and, <laughs> and occasional ridiculous drunk and <laughs> bipolar guest christian jensen who mostly curses but doesn't always when there's an 11 year old in the room but sometimes he fucking does anyway because he just <laughs> doesn't care dad's not here. <laughs> hey your dad's not here you want bourbon <laughs> no. Oh, no no i think yeah, i have, I have some. Some. like the girlfriend here I gotta oh what like, come on i know i know it goes against my new jersey upbringing but i gotta say <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> um Okay. I'm sorry. It, I didn't mean to harsh your mellow. I once had a sip of beer. Oh, okay. Well, well you know, we'll, we'll build you up. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm I, also a father. It's not something I talk about often because I don't want the the public knowledge. But my, my kids are older. I, I do have children. I have three children. They're do all you? boys. Really? I do. Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. I kept it that much of a secret. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have my, my oldest is 21. 
My oh, middle is two. 19, and my youngest is 14. And you have a three-legged Excellent. dog. And I have, yes, I have a three-legged <laughs> dog. I have, I have a story about my three-legged dog, but we're talking publishing, so we'll, publishing, come, back we'll, we'll come back to the three-legged one of my, dog. One of my biggest questions I've always had and wondered is, so you can get yourself on Twitter, and you're, mm-hmm. you're, you, know, you, you meet some new people and everything, but for me right now, it just feels like it's kind of a stagnant thing where like the people that are going to my books are the people that I either know as friends and family mm-hmm. or friends of their friends. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really go much farther outside of that. How do you reach those people that are beyond like the campfire stories that you can tell? Okay. It's, it's a multi-step process. Okay. Uh, you got a, you got a pen and paper? I do. Okay. I well, can also listen back to this episode too. So. You can do that too. <laughs> and, and nothing I'm going to say is going to be worth writing down. Cause I'm like Mary, I do listen to the show. Oh, <laughs> oh. No, wait, I, I, I That's twice now you're throwing me under the bus. So you tried to put me on a fucking road trip of death. Why? Why? Because it's with me? No, because Kelly's going to be there. <laughs> That's fair. No, I love Kelly. You she was, she, the, she as, was, I just as, met her out of nowhere, and she was a delight. As someone who has spent like. two days in the car with Kelly Ellen, I just want to let you know, and you, this is going to shock you guys. Seriously, prepare yourselves. Hold on to the table. Holding. She doesn't stop talking. <laughs> As someone who has lived with Kelly Owen, not once but twice, yeah. mind you, this is going to shock you. Yeah. Hold on to the table. Yeah. She does not stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as someone who has, who has met Kelly Owen many times, <laughs> this may shock you. Hold on to the table. <laughs> I had. She's got great tits. <laughs> See, I was I was gonna throw the microphone to Dungeon Master and have him say something about Aunt Kelly, but he's clearly enamored with you, and I don't want him repeating that. <laughs> I absolutely love what, Kelly. What's that buddy oh, yeah, she's she's she is amazing. Okay, um, amazing. Yeah. Now it's my hold on to the table moment. Oh, hold on to the table, okay. Aunt Kelly. Um, Aunt Kelly, as someone who has met her, no offense, Aunt Kelly, Aunt Kelly. You never stop cursing. <laughs> right about that. Yeah. Does does Aunt Kelly curse more than I do? No. She mm. cursed at the hospital when you were born. She said, what a cute effing baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I may be exaggerating about that, but she was there when you were born. She came to, came to visit. You know that blanket hanging up in the room on your wall? Yeah. Aunt Kelly stole mom that from another woman who made it. <laughs> From the hospital, uh, <laughs> nursery. There's a very cold baby somewhere. <laughs> he's 11 years old now, but he still can't shake that chill. Oh, yeah. He's been sickly ever since, ever because he keeps just himself because warm with Kelly Jersey stole- whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Jersey. You can't have. Well, okay, you can have Jersey whiskey. You can't have Jersey bourbon, technically, but it's it's not as good. Even though you know the the stuff out of Asbury Park is pretty good, but no, it's it's not Jersey whiskey. <laughs> I'm just, you know, That's fine. You can take a picture of me all day. Christine, Christine, can your image be online? Yes. Yeah, you're okay with that? Sure, why not? Okay. I mean, the divorce is almost finalized, so Girl it's fine. Power. <laughs> the girls are in the studio That's right. There's a lot of females in here. There's a lot of large breasts in this place. So it's a fantastic... Uh, save us, Matt. <laughs> You okay, usually, Matt, you usually I, do. I had, I had a legitimate question. I didn't answer my okay. I, 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 that's right, you did. And then I don't know. There was boobs and stuff, and then Kelly Owens. So, okay, no, your your, your question. Um, honestly, the the real way for you to to outreach the people that you know yes. to to extend your 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 tentacles, so to speak, or your testicles, whichever you prefer. <laughs> um, you you have to create a brand for yourself. Correct. Okay. Mine is is drunken idiot, so you can't have that one. <laughs> okay. But you have to find another one, and you're you're bald and you have a beard and you got a gut, so you you you're, you're fucking way behind on me, brother. Yeah. So <laughs> you you have to create a brand. Okay. And that brand, whatever it is, has to go everywhere with you. Right. People have to know you by that brand. You take that brand on social media. You take that brand to conventions. You take that brand out in public. Anywhere that you can promote yourself, you promote yourself as that brand. Okay. Very few people, and I mean, there's a couple people in this room that are that are an example, or, or a um, not an example, the opposite of an example. Um, very few people know the real Christian Jensen. Um, everybody thinks that I'm this drunken author, kind of Bukowski wannabe guy who drinks too much, goes to conventions, talks too much as a womanizer, whatever. That's my brand. 
I take it here. I take it to conventions. I take it everywhere. And yeah, I, I do drink a lot. And this is legit whiskey. It's not iced tea dressed up to look <laughs> like it. I, I do like to drink. I write when I'm drunk um, or when I'm drinking. It's just who I am. It's how my creativity flows. But you have to have a brand and you have to stick to that brand. And the brand is what reaches other people. And it reaches them really fucking slow. Right. And you have to be consistent with it. And you have to take it with you. And you have to put it in everybody's face. And don't be afraid to find your favorite authors. Maybe you drive three hours to go to somebody's class. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you go to... You drive two and... uh, Two hours and 15 minutes to go to a writer's coffee shop with Jonathan Mayberry. That I used to do back in the day. That's right. I used to do that, yeah. Um, you, You seek out your betters. And you insert your brand to them and you, you, you work with that. Okay. Um, I, I've had the prev, the, the, the privilege and it's it actually, I, I was thinking about it when I was in the shower this morning that, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Automatically uh, Mary goes, right Mary, <laughs> Mary is, direction. Mary is thinking about me in the shower. Let's just keep that. You know, I'll send you pictures. Look at how blush she is getting. <laughs> No, honestly, I I was. I was thinking about this morning because I knew I was coming on the show, so there's always a certain amount of, you know, things you want to say, things you don't want to say, and, you know, and and running through all this stuff in my head. But thinking back to 10, 12, 15 years ago, before I was Christian Jensen, author and actor and and whatever the fuck I am now, but I I was just, I was me. You know, I was just some guy turning wrenches, who read a ton and loved books and had always read all this stuff and always had in his mind that you know, he was a writer, that he wanted to be a writer. Yeah. You know, that guy wouldn't believe who I am now because looking at some of the authors that I've been associated with, like at, I've been, been compared to Ed Lee. I've been compared to Jack Ketchum. I've been compared to the guys that are my idols. I sat down with... I, I'm sitting down right now, like not to sound corny and stupid, but Brian Keene was one of my idols. He was one of the first guys that I, I kind of reached out to. You know, I was sitting there reading, and I still remember, I was reading um, I was reading Outcasts. I was in my tub, in my house in South River, New Jersey, which is where a lot of my books take place. Right. And I finished the book while I was, I was laying in the tub. And I, on, on the back of the book was was the, the Dorchester blurb about how Brian Keene um, communicates with his his fans and blah 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 at Brian Keene you know and, right. and and the old forum days, and that's that's what started me on on I had been writing, I, I was writing every day and I was trying to piece together books and nothing ever worked together. Right. But you know that was I was like oh yeah I'm sure Brian Keene really goes on this this bullshit forum you know and I went on and started doing shit, but he was one of my idols. You know, like he was one of the guys that like I wanted to be. I can't even say when I grew up because I was already an adult. I was already a father. I own my own house. The house I was I was in the tub in was my own house. Right. You know, like I was a grown up, but I wanted to be Brian Key when I grew oh, up. Oh, I, I totally I, I was the same way with Lansdale and Layman and, yeah, and those guys, you know. Yeah. And and now I look at myself, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later. And, you know, it, it was the, the tweet that you put out that had it was. You, Jonathan Mayberry, um, uh, Weston Oaks. And Lee Murray. Lee last Murray, week's show, yeah. And and me, and my name in it. And I didn't even catch the original tweet, but I saw, you know, all of a sudden I'm getting inundated by all these you know comments and likes and retweets on Twitter. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? And I go back <laughs> and I look through and I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. And I kind of see and I just kind of pass by it. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, big deal. My name fucking, you know, my name's on, on a tweet with Brian Keene and, and Weston Oaks and Jonathan Mayberry. Oh, big deal. You know, and... and and it wasn't until, you know, I'm, I'm prepping for the show this morning in the shower, which, again, I bring it back to me naked in the tub, because that's a visual I think everybody should have. Mary, do you have anything to say about Mary, that? Mary, would, would, like uh, would you like to comment? <laughs> She's like, just but, let me drink my vitamin water. Mary's blushing Dungeon Master's <laughs> holding his up. eyes shut. <laughs> Once again, I would like to say that I'm not a pedophile, and I don't want any children to think about. Th- You're ruining me. All right, do me a, do me a favor. Yes. Take a deep breath. Okay. Grab your microphone. Okay. Hand it to Christine. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Not okay. the booze. So now, you and I, we both know the real Christian. That's true. Okay. 
when he turns it on, when it's time to go to the convention, go to the signing, and he has to turn it on. Yeah. Do you? Are you cool with that? I mean, you probably met the public Christian Jensen before you got to new, know the new one. Yes. So, is it weird for you to watch him switch back and forth at this point? It's not weird, but it's it's entertaining. It's entertaining. I love watching it. <laughs> yeah. It's fun, like because he, he totally like flips that switch. That's what Mary says about me. She says, you know, in, in a split second, yeah. the switch goes on. Hey, how you doing, Brian Keene? Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, I really, I really enjoy it. I mean, we actually met at a convention, I mean, years ago, but, yeah. so I met the the persona, yeah. I guess, so to say, but now I know the real guy, and, you know, it's cool. <laughs> you like the persona better? <laughs> No comment. Everybody likes a persona better. <laughs> All right. So, Slasher 15's got their Kickstarter going. Yes. Okay. Um, I think our listeners can make that happen. It's um, they, they have to go about five grand, give or take. Yeah. Um, but but it's the perks. Now, I mean, the the fact that you're giving money to this, this incredible movie, um, it's what... Every, and honestly, I, I can I can tell you just about everybody listening to this would, would is absolutely going to love this movie. It's an '80s teen slasher flick set in a summer camp, and we're filming in a legit summer camp. Um, and and the, I think one of the coolest things about the summer camp here's here's a little glimpse into real me. This is a summer camp for the for for the for the for the honest to, to goodness like special kids the the guys the, the the kids that actually deserve to really go out and and have a good summer camp experience right and it's they're they're a i believe they're a nonprofit don't quote me on that i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure these guys exist solely to help the 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 special needs kids so the money that and a large part of the, our kickstarter is to pay this camp Right. So that we have the scene to the the uh, that's the camp holiday trails in yes. Charlottesville, Virginia. Yep. yep. Yeah, and it is you know they they're uh, pretty much most of what we're we're raising is to pay them to be able to film, which is eighty to ninety percent of our locations. Right. And all the money that goes to them goes to help these kids. So not only are you helping this incredible movie get made, but you're also helping these incredible kids have a great time at this camp. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. It's really yeah, scary. I mean that that's awesome, and especially since we're we're going to be filming either in spring or fall, so we're not in we're not filming in the season when the kids would be there. You know, I mean they, they, these kids have school and all that. So, so you're you not know. going to be giving whiskey to here, the here the. Extra I will children. not be giving okay. whiskey to any children. There will not be children on set. How much is it to to be the killer? I don't know. I believe five hundred. Yeah, I believe so, it's about five hundred. Now we've got all kinds of of very. Very well-to-do listeners out there. Oh, absolutely. So if somebody wanted to pay it, but they didn't want to be the killer, let's say they wanted Matt to be the killer in the movie. <laughs> absolutely. That can be arranged. They, they can either message me or Dave Kerr on, on Twitter or <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Why laugh at this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, 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 there you have it, listeners. Let, okay. Let's well, make Matt a killer. Uh, okay, it's... Uh, where are we at? 500 or more is to die in the film. Okay. We have 500 or more to be the killer in the movie. Now, that's not for the entire movie, of course. Right. But it, it's for at least one full scene where you will be the mass killer. Um, and it says, for $500, appear as Devil Face in Bloody Summer Camp for one death scene. You know what would be really funny? We put up $1,000, and Matt and Lombardo go, both get to be the killer in a scene. It will never work because one scene he'll be like five three, and then the next scene he's like fucking almost six. I know feet that's tall. what I mean. <laughs> we, can, we can work with that. For, honestly, for a thousand dollars, we can work with. Yeah, that. they'll figure it out. There's Godzilla movie. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's, it's fine. It just film from low angle. But I mean, but I mean, you can you can be the killer. You can be an executive producer. You can get an advanced copy of the DVD. You can get a signed picture of one of one of the female cast members who is a very very gorgeous woman. Uh, that has topless photos because it is a, a summer camp 80s kind of slasher flick. There are boobs in the movie. So I'm sorry you won't be able to see it for at least another couple years. Unless you come to my house, then you can see it now and drink bourbon. <laughs> you know, let's let's ask Mr. Christian before okay. we end the show. Terminator. Yes. Now, <laughs> Dungeon Master is to the age now where I'm I'm starting to let him watch, you know, 
more adult movies. Okay. Okay. He does well with violence. He's okay with blood. Um, but there's that one scene in Terminator, right. know and you exactly. know which scene. The, yes, I, I know exactly which scene and you're talking it, about. It's unfortunate because I think he could certainly sit through the rest of the franchise. Yes. But there's that one scene in the first movie. But that scene is pivotal. And it is. To the rest of the movie. And I don't, I don't know how to get around that. So he's there, just got to wait a couple well, more years. Well, here's, I, I may be the wrong person to ask for it. And, and it's, it's not because why everybody thinks. <laughs> hold, hold on to the table, it Dave. Is, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't, don't hold on to the table. It's not one of those moments. But with, with my kids, because... And, and I, I said before, I, I have three kids. What's the thing? Because people forget you're a father. They That's do. why I'm bringing this up. They do. Yeah. Um, I and wanted... we're not asking public Christian. No, this is, well, yeah. this is I, I, I'm honest, I'm, I'm answering this honestly as a father. Um, I wanted my, my kids to enjoy the movies that I enjoyed growing up. And, right. And I wanted them to get to see everything as, as unfiltered as they can. So I started them with. With with all of them, you know, and and we started with Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Exorcist. And by the time my kids were ten, eleven years old, they saw all the greats. They saw everything that I grew up with. They saw all the blood, all the violence, all the gore. Um, and I never once sat up with my kids because of a nightmare. Yeah, never. To, no, me either. Never. And I, I remember I had a conversation. My here, here's a fun fact about me that people don't know. Uh, my mother got remarried when I was 17 years old. And she had... Now, I'm, I'm, a, very, I'm a young father. I had my first kid when I was 21. Me too. Um, it's like, it's it's, like we're, we're, we're We're simpatico. We're like right, we're, we're, we're right there. I thought that was like a requirement in New Jersey. Well, like, there's oh. a lot of requirements in New Jersey that people make up. Here but, you go, Mary. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, wah, wah. Oh, you know <laughs> How oh, old's your brother? Your brother's 29, right? Don't you, you were 21. Uh, almost 30. Again, so, yeah. So, I guess I was about 21. Okay, so you can just take that foot right out of your mouth right now. <laughs> or just keep it in there and shut the fuck up while I continue to talk. <laughs> That's fine, too. <laughs> you hear how these people talk to me. Should I, should I also shut up? No, you can keep talking. I, I like you. Your dad, not so much. <laughs> Your dad, not so much. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, but, but as a father, like, I, I remember my, my half-sister is two years older than my oldest son. My half-brother is the same age as my oldest son. And I remember having the conversation with my mother because there was a Rugrats Halloween special that had a ghost in it. And my my half sister and my half brother were up for weeks because of this Rugrats special. And they now my kids and her kids watched it together. They mm-hmm. were all you know they were all about the same age. They all watched it together around Halloween. And she she called me up and said, oh, I can't believe you know my kids can't you know they're they're in my bed. They can't sleep. I'm like, what are you talking about? My kids are fine. I'm like, but you know my kids watched the Tans- Texas Chainsaw Massacre yesterday, so it's it's not an issue. So so my I, I fed my kids a steady diet of, of horror movies. And read them from your books, Brian's books, Richard Lehman's books, Stephen King's books, Kuntz's books, you know, and, and some of the lesser knowns. But, like, like, I didn't sit down and read them, like, you know, uh, hop on pop when they, when they were a kid. I, whatever I was reading, when it was time for my kids to go to bed, I would sit down and I would put them in their crib and they would fuss and I would sit there and I would read from them whatever novel I was reading. So if that was, but there were limits. You weren't reading Edward Lee's The Pig. No, no, no. I, I didn't. I didn't go that extreme. You but know, it, it, James it was, White's Poisoning Arrows. No, no, okay. no, no, no. But it, it was more of the mainstream kind of stuff. You right. know, the you know. But I, I, but it was more the the the, the tone of my voice and the comfort of me mm. being there that that put them to sleep. But they had that horror novel influence. They had the horror movie influence from the time they were born. And as they got older, it just kind of became a fact that, well, you, you know that, you know, mom has boobs and people, you know, women have boobs. And sometimes in these movies, there's boobs. So you really shouldn't look at them, but they're there and it's, it is what it is. And by the time they hit nine, 10, I kind of had to talk with them. So they knew how, where babies came from and stuff. Right. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I'm not showing them anything, you know, 
hardcore. I'm not showing them anything inappropriate, but it's you know this is a movie, and 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 to the Terminator answer, it's it's pivotal to the plot. It is. It's it, it is it is honestly, it's arguably the entire plot. Yeah. Yeah. Of of you know the the scene that you're talking without about. Without that scene, there would be without no that John scene, Connor. In there, the there'd be no John Connor. Right. You know, I without. I, I feel like when, you when, <laughs> when I was growing up, my parents were less concerned about nudity than they were about violence. And I think with with my son when when we when we started watching movies, I was I was it was almost like you know it's what I thought he could handle at the time. But we always discussed like well you know how mommy writes scary stories for grown ups and that's part of her job. I said this person's job when he goes to work he pretends to be a monster you know or this person's job when he goes to work he he finds ways to make fake stuff look real like blood that's that's like what that, I do with my know? kids that I would show them one movie where a character dies right and I would say okay you know. You saw him die, but now let's watch this movie and he's alive again. Right. So, so it's just pretend. So I don't it's, think it's pretend. It's Dungeon acting. Master. I don't want to speak for you. I don't think you've ever been confused over that. I mean, you've grown up with with Mike Lombardo as your your illegitimate other older brother, and he's shown you how all the behind the scenes. Disturbing you know, on you know so my many mother. levels. Like she, you know. You know what? Lombardo is is the best other brother. Oh, I, I wouldn't doubt have. it. He, he's mean, the sweetest yeah. kid in in yeah. real life. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen like how they do like um, I don't know maybe like a someone's face melting mm-hmm. off or something mm-hmm. like they have, like, like my dad's talked about this before. It's basically like the he told me in the first Indiana Jones movie they had like they just put a lot of Jello or yep. something. Gelatin. Yep. And yep. Then it just, they just you know, I just I just want to interrupt for a second and say how impressed I am with this eleven year old kid that he's already like a host. He's he's ready to do oh, this. He is, yeah, he really is because he's like you know my my dad's already touched on this before. But let me just bring you back to something that he brought. Yeah. He's got this whole he thing does. down. Absolutely, he uh, my fiftieth birthday. You're fifty. I am. Uh, you're over fifty. For my fiftieth birthday, I know you're old. You know we got shit. everybody's here, and there's a whole bunch of kids in the house, and basically became you know. The adults are hosting a party out here, and Dungeon Master's hosting a party for all the kids in the house. <laughs> but at one point, Weston Oaks goes in there, and all the kids are playing and jumping around and hooping and hollering except one. Dungeon Master is sitting there at the desk writing a comic book real quick. <laughs> and, and Weston smiled and came out. He, he, he said, I got to tell you, that's your kid. And I'm like, was there doubt? He goes, no, but he's in there writing while all this chaos is going on around <laughs> us. So... All right, you know, my, my my heart goes out to Wes and and, and Yvonne. They they recently lost one of their great Danes. Yes, oh, and man. and uh, I've I've spoken at length with Yvonne Navarro about uh, about the great Danes. I, I I've owned several, and I know they have as well. And and that's how her and I bonded. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, we. Uh, I will get choked up about this more than I will about you know and any person that that passed away. But the, the they they lost their uh, their their I believe it was Grimmy that that uh, that passed, yep. and that is uh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's I I, I lost I lost a great day, and she was six years old. She was the most loving, sweetest, most amazing dog I've ever had, and it broke my heart when I lost her. So I I know what they're going through. So you know that. Absolutely. I just wanted to say that about them. About you know, um, I, I could care less about Wesson, but Yvonne has to be <laughs> heartbroken. I was thinking, how the hell am I going to segue out of this into an upbeat ending? But you did it. You, you're I, a professional. I brought, I brought the upbeat ending with me. All right, Kickstarter dot com. Bloody summer camp. Everybody who listens to this fucking show has to donate at least one dollar. One one dollar. You two hundred thousand listeners. I don't care. How you many. can make fifty movies with that budget. <laughs> no, because you, you know, you know damn well. Maybe five percent of them are actually going to donate out of out of the two hundred thousand that are listening, and uh, out of out of them, I, I want to see twenty five bucks because I mean twenty five bucks is at, at least going to get you a copy of the DVD when it's done. There you which, go. Which gets you the DVD. It gets you all the extras. It gets you because there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that is absolutely ridiculous. The behind the scenes for Return of the Slasher Nurse is ridiculous, <laughs> largely because of me just being a complete ass on on camera. It, no, it really is. Um, Dave let me go completely off the rails on a lot of things. It was it was a blast. Could he have stopped you from going off? Nobody can stop me going off the rails. <laughs> Brian has tried. I have a 
quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, quick question. Yes, please. Um, yeah, you in the front with a fantastic breast. Why, thank you. Uh, <laughs> do you ever want to be behind the camera, or do you just enjoy being there, like, just acting? Like, do you ever think like I want to make a movie from start to finish that's all mine? That 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 is a a goal of mine. Um, yeah. I, I've written many scripts before. Um, I've I've actually won. Or or well, been like third, fourth in, in some awards with, with some scripts. I, I love script writing. Writing is always gonna be my passion. Script writing, I absolutely love it. But to actually do a do a movie that is my movie from right. my inception to, to final cut, that is absolutely a goal. And it will someday happen. Um probably someday pretty soon. But yet I would absolutely love to to be behind the scenes and to do something that is that is epic. Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. awesome. Now um I'm going way off topic here. But, okay. Um, for pu- public Chris Jensen, like the public version yeah, we all okay. know. Um, <laughs> how, Mary, how many swears have you counted so far? Because <laughs> he hasn't been paying you know enough. I lost track after the $15 mark, so if it was like a dollar a swear, I, I think... He's, he's a working writer. He can't afford to pay for all the swears. <laughs> he's got $2 there, or $3 there. Which, which we'll, is actually yeah. donated by... By this guy next to me, uh, so. Matt, yeah, Matt has Matt, Matt has that, Matt has so. has sponsored me for a little bit of the curses. All right. If I had to estimate, I'd say about forty. Yeah, maybe somewhere around yeah. there. Right? I think that's a fair. Assessment. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to sign us out now, and to do that, I'm gonna show you what I brought. Up. This is this is Glendale Irish whiskey, double barrel Irish whiskey. Ooh, I don't so have double for, barrel. This was a gift from Matt Hayward. Ooh, I only, Matt Hayward. So it's from Ireland. It's from Ireland. I only. Ooh, bring it I, I, you know, I love and respect yep. Matt Hayward. Special Absolutely. occasions only. I think John Urbansick is the only other guest. Okay. On the show. Okay. That has had this. I'm going to give you some today. Oh, I love you. Um, I love you. Even though you tried to give my child whiskey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm even. Gonna, I'm even going to let you use J.F. Gonzalez's whiskey glass. Wow. That Are you is, serious? Yeah, I'm serious. serious. So. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is, and let, let me just touch real quick on the fact that a lot of people don't know Private Brian, and there's few things Private because Brian I have a public persona. As well. Oh, absolutely, but there's there's a few things that that Private Brian holds holy above everything else, and one of that is one of those is his relationship with with Jesus Gonzalez. I only got the privilege to meet him once, and that was. Christ, that was at a film festival in Lancaster Film Festival. The Lambcat, yeah. Yep. I, I was volunteering for the ties that bind. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I remember all I remember is you you had some books out. Jesus had some books out. Um, I was volunteering with um, oh, how what, what? Jeff Heinbuck. No, Jeff mm-hmm. Heinbuck was there, but he wasn't volunteering. It was the ah. Uh, one of the other guys that was part of the the drunken Mike tentacles. Antonio. Mike Antonio. Yep. Um, I volunteered with Mike Antonio, and uh, there was the guy who set that film festival up had a movie on that was "Dude, Where's My Beer?" Right. That was the worst <laughs> thing anybody had ever seen on film, and we were we were mocking it. Oh my God! And the guy was sitting directly in front of us. <gasps> and and Mike Antonio was like like knock it off knock it off like, this is so bad this guy couldn't make his way out of a paper bag if he tried to write dialogue why is it so fucking long it's horrible and he's like the guy's right in front of you we're like fuck that guy because he sucks <laughs> That's awesome. and uh, I I don't think I don't think Jesus liked me very much he was. <laughs> He was, no, he liked you fine. Uh, he, he was a very quiet guy. Jesus and I were were not having a good evening at that film festival. No, there were there were some shenanigans going on behind the scenes that neither of us should have been involved with. I'm sure. It I'm was, sure it was, it was it was a mess. It was somebody else. And I won't name names on the show, and you don't name names on this show either. I, okay, I would somebody. Know brought both his wife and his mistress to oh, the Oh, I do know that. And Oh, I know that. Jesus <laughs> was <laughs> so... <laughs> Jesus had a very deep moral code. There were some things he would not abide. And Jesus was so incensed, and we had had whiskey behind the table, as we often did, mm-hmm. and he got very angry and stood up and blurted it out, not realizing that all three... Of the people in this triangle were within earshot. I remember that exact moment. Yes. Yes. So, so if you thought Jesus didn't like you, no, he liked you just fine. He I remember. I remember. He said, "Who's the crazy guy with the beard?" And your beard wasn't <laughs> as long. That no, it wasn't, he it said. Wasn't, it wasn't he as said long. the same thing I said about you first time. He said, "You know who that guy reminds me of?" And I said, "Coop." And he said, "Yeah, Coop." 
it, we both thought of you as a, a, a young coop. Um, no, he liked you just fine. Okay, but yeah, well, but yeah, that was not a good night for me or him. No, and, I, I, and I would plus expect sales it was. were shit. We oh, didn't it was make any money. Horrible. And, Everything yeah. was horrible at that convention. Any any time we didn't make money, we we would just drink more whiskey and get madder. And, and <laughs> well, then, we then I think we should drink people. some whiskey. So we will drink some whiskey. Yes. But before we do that, I want to remind folks. Uh, first of all, one more time. Kickstarter, Bloody Summer Camp, starring Christian Jensen. Please, they need your help to make this happen. And if you want him back on the show again, can't have him back until he, you know, writes another book or gets this movie made. So that's right. So if you want to hear all my made. ridiculous stupidity, you you just need to to donate to the film. That's right. Why do you not drink whiskey? And speaking of, there's a story. <laughs> are you? Do you don't drink at all? Okay. I do drink. Okay, we're so, never getting out of here, Dungeon Master. Never, no, never. No. If you don't I, want me to tell the story, I, I, I have to. I have to go to the bathroom so bad I'm dying. I'll tell but, you off the air. But no, no, no. I want to know now. All right. So basically, you you had sex you, you with have, a transsexual. No, hooker. You, had, you had parties, and you know there's like games that you play at parties, and Flip Cup was one of the ones that out of the houses we played a lot. Well, I got really drunk and decided I would start playing with whiskey instead of beer. Okay. Oh, wow. Oops. I splashed the cup in my face and accidentally snorted the whiskey Oops. out of my nose. Oh. Okay. Violently ill for like okay, two here, days here, straight. Ch- just chase it. I made I Mary smell. do taste that, Matt. Taste it. Don't, ta- don't smell it. Just taste I, it. I once made Mary just snort a line of ahead. whiskey. So I'm, I'm very serious. Just taste it. That's actually pretty damn good. I fucking cured him. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to go to a, if you want to buy a house, you go to a realtor. If you want to buy a car, you go to a car salesman. If you want to drink fucking whiskey, you go to hardwritingdaddy.com, <laughs> which isn't my website, but should if be. You want whiskey that is the equivalent of, I don't know, an Aries K car? Yeah. If you an want Aries K car, if you want the BMW, an Aries K car, you want the BMW of whiskey. Okay, well, first you of go all, to first off, the fact that you went right to BMW tells me that you're a dick. Okay, I, you see what I'm driving. Well, that's <laughs> what true. I know about cars. That's, you, you know nothing about cars, as the story with Coop will attest. Know, Brian. I, so how do you how do you set the uh, the the time in your car? If you want to set the clock in the your car, belt. the timing belt, exactly. The timing belt. Dungeon Master, your father's a retard. We don't say that. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't. Yeah. We don't. You're uh, right. Yeah. I, okay. For, I have two things to say. First off, you call my dad a dick. Them's fight more. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think okay. you're allowed to use that <laughs> 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 Okay. Well, uh, to, to that, I will say, bring it. Oh, he was quoted. Oh, he was <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 hold on. Oh. <laughs> and second That's all, him play my music. And second all, the yeah. R word is a very strong word. It, no, you're right. You're right. And and it's wrong. I, I, word. You're right. It is. And I shouldn't have said it. But in my generation, it, it's a little bit different. people on the playground over the years. And of that you know what? You should. You should. You stand up. You stand up for, for, yeah, that, for those good, less fortunate. Moment, and you know what? I apologize for that to you because I, I, apo- and I, I, I apologize to you, <laughs> listeners. For <laughs> just for, for having today. me on the air <laughs> I apologize particularly to the <laughs> the families of Dennis Etchison and Frank Michaels Eric who, who tuned in <laughs> to hear the, our lovely the tributes. wonderful <laughs> tributes to two amazing individuals that I completely sullied the show <laughs> In fact, you know, I apologize to everyone who who listens here anytime I'm on this but show. But you know what? <laughs> we have something we have four things that will make it better. First of all, Defenders Dialogue. That's a spinoff show I host every week with Christopher Golden where we wax nostalgically about Bronze Age Marvel Comics. <laughs> Cosmic Shenanigans, where Mary doesn't g- giggle. Instead, she gets very academic. I am very serious. And professorial and talks about cosmic horror. Until she thinks about um, me in the shower. <laughs> Grindcast, which is a show Matt does every week with 100% less whiskey than yeah. you heard here today. <laughs> I don't know. This might make an appearance. <laughs> you, you might be putting this down, and maybe I have some back, you know, some some history in New Jersey. But this was damn well, good. I'm a <laughs> help, help I am I am as, help I am as blue collar as they get until it comes to bourbon and whiskey, and then I admit I'm an elitist and a You're snob. a hoity toity little fruit. When it comes to so bourbon, I am. you are. You know, you absolutely are. It's very but smooth. when <laughs> you it like, is, it is. When you come from my family, where your grandfather was was the Moonshiner of note. That is true. However, I mean, you wait, have let, to let have standards. Answer, let me ask you an uh, honest answer. Have you ever had wild turkey American I, honey? I have. It's it's delightful. 
It okay. is. It's good <laughs> it's if delightful. if it's if I'm at a party and somebody has yes. it. Sure. That one, but, Am I buying it at the liquor store? No. Okay, but but but, but here's my thing. Okay, I will I will take a bottle with. I will take two or three bottles with me, and I will drink. At least, not not one of the the Percy little bottles, but a, a full <laughs> on a, like a full size, seven fifty or one point five mil bottle with me, to a convention, and I, I will drink that. So I'm not drinking a, a a full. I'm not drinking anything expensive because I'm I'm drinking it like soda. I'm not gonna drink a twenty year old scotch. Like a twenty year old scotch or a hundred and fifty dollar bottle of bourbon like it's soda. If I'm going to drink soda, yeah. I'm going to drink wild turkey American honey. It's amazing. It tastes good. It goes down smooth. Um, I can drink a shit ton of it and still be completely coherent. Let me ask you something. Yes, Dave. We're gonna we're gonna plug your show, but then apparently this show is gonna continue because now I, I got a whole new line of questions. I have to and of course, so twitch.tv <laughs> slash Meteor Notes. If you didn't have the brand, if you didn't have the persona, yes, would you drink that much? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, that's it's, that's real Christian. Not this brand is Christian. this is real me. I I love alcohol because you know brand Brian Keen. Oh yeah, it doesn't you know, yeah. Brand Brian Keen drinks all the time. Yeah. Brian at home never drinks. Correct. Unless Christian comes to visit. <laughs> I, 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 I have that effect I, I, on people. I can verify. Like very rarely does Brian ever. I, I I've even said you you want me to get you a glass of bourbon? He's, no, I'm okay. I'm I mean fine. you know I finish a book. Yeah, I have a ritual. You know mm-hmm. whiskey. Uh, you know, some music, et cetera. But, you know, or, you know, if, if it's been a crap day, I might have a shot. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. But so no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm good for coming home and I will drink. I drink more than the average person. I, are, I do enjoy do it. Do you have trouble turning off the brand? No. No? No. No. All right. All right. We're going to let you go pee now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> if there's something you want us to talk about, folks, hit us up on Twitter or BrianKeen.com. Uh, once again, we're available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, YouTube, and all other platforms via the Project Entertainment Network. Uh, one more time, thanks to Armand Rosamilia and Chuck Buddha for sponsoring this week's show with Keyport Cthulhu 2, on sale now from Amazon and available for free on Kindle Unlimited. And the forward... By our own Mary San Giovanni. I guess that's included for you on Kindle Unlimited as well. Yes. So, all right. Woo-hoo. Next week, Dave, Matt, uh, I don't know what we have. What, what, uh, what can we really do? We've had yeah. four yeah. incredible shows. It's Jeremy like Wagner. after Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Wagner, Jonathan Jans, Jonathan Mayberry, Weston Oaks, Lee Murray, and we topped them off with the cherry on top of that Horror Writer Sunday with Christian Jensen. I don't know. I have no idea. Well, man. it's still going to be a good show regardless. Well, it will. Of course, because it's us. Still listen, I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to let Phoebe and Dungeon Master send us off. All right. Well, folks, I hope you all had a good episode. And, um, well, it's going to be, I hope the next one's even better than this. Oh, With sure, a little maybe. less swearing. With a little less swearing. All right. Well, I can't, how do you beat that? You, well I done. Bring back Dungeon Brian Master. Smith. Oh, you mean how? Oh, I thought you meant how do you beat Christian? Yeah, that's that's an I mean, outro you, know, you can't great, beat. Great ex- exit there. So. Th- thank you. I I I forgot to um cancel out the hope and say it will probably be equal to this right. this episode. In fact, every episode of the Brian Keene Ho- the horror show with Brian Keene is this great. <laughs> he is that's so right. Mic drop. We'll see you next week, folks. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. What up? Co-workers is hard at work. Show where we talk about nerds so we talk about at work to the strats from work recorded at work. I'm hard at work, Matt. I'm hard at work, Nick. Our show comes on every Tuesday around six o'clock or so. That sounds about right. And what do we talk about? We talk about the nerdy stuff. You know, we're talking video games, movies, TV shows. How much insider knowledge we got? Zero. None at all. We don't know shit. How good are our opinions? Oh, they're real good. <laughs> they real good though. Trust me. <laughs> So tune in, give it a listen, you'll love it.